The Kingdom Hearts series is full of dozens of different Keyblades, all with their own attributes and abilities. In some games, especially Kingdom Hearts 2, there are so many Keyblades that it can be hard to choose which Keyblade is the best in the endgame. What is widely considered the best Keyblade with the community might not suit every situation you get in, and sometimes experimenting with different Keyblades can prove that some different ones are still very good late in the game. In this guide, I will be going through every Keyblade in Kingdom Hearts 2, including its Final Mix counterpart. First, I will describe the basics of how to obtain the Keyblade, then show its basic stats and attached ability, and take these into account for how and when you should use the Keyblade at any given point during the story. The first Keyblade on the list is the classic Kingdom Key. This is the first Keyblade obtained in the game and is obtained just by playing the story. When you begin as Roxas, you do not have the ability to use it, however Roxas begins to have the ability to use it as the story progresses and you can use it at certain points throughout the intro sequence. Once you begin playing as Sora, you can use the Kingdom Key right off the bat. The Kingdom Key has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 1, and the ability Critical Half, which increases your defense when the health bar is in the red or critical zone, or when you start hearing an annoying beeping noise signifying that you are about to die. Because the Kingdom Key is obtained in the beginning of the game, you're stuck with it for a while until you get another one. Thankfully, this Keyblade is actually very good. Its Strength is average, and its Magic is kind of null and void considering that you don't have much magic in the beginning of the game. Its, its critical half ability is great for players who may be having trouble with the game and need a little help staying alive when they come close to dying. Later in the game, this Keyblade is also very fun to use for an added challenge. The Star Seeker is obtained from the Fairy Godmothers at Yensid's Castle in Twilight Town. However, this Keyblade is not obtained through normal measures. This Keyblade is obtained at the same time that you gain the ability to use Valor Drive form and this Keyblade starts off being attached to Valor form, meaning you cannot use the Star Seeker normally outside of Valor form, until you get another Keyblade. The Star Seeker has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 1, and the ability Air Combo Plus, which increases the number of hits you can do in an aerial combo by 1. This Keyblade is a great early game option next to the Kingdom Key. Air Combo Plus is great for early game, especially since you cannot technically get the first Air Combo Plus until the second visit to Hollow Bastion when you obtain Master form. Although, some people may still prefer being able to get to their finisher faster, in which case, stick to the Kingdom Key at this point. The Hidden Dragon is obtained from completing the first visit to the Land of Dragons. It has a Strength of 2, a Magic of 2, and the ability MP Rage, which causes any damage you take to recharge the MP gauge faster. This is a very balanced Keyblade for the beginning of the game, with its stats being even between Strength and Magic. However, like I mentioned previously, magic is not very present in the beginning of the game, aside from two or three spells, making magic less useful at this point. However, its magic ability, MP Rage, makes this keyblade able to handle early game magic usage much better. If you tend to spam fire or blizzard early in the game, this might be the keyblade for you early on, however otherwise, stick to the kingdom key or star seeker. But this keyblade also does have another great usage, once you obtain wisdom form after completing timeless river, this Keyblade is great to use to level it up, or to use in general with the form. MP Rage will keep your MP rolling, reloading when it's down, and the magic is only matched by one other Keyblade by the time you complete Dimos River, making this an amazing Keyblade for you to use for the form early on. Hero's Crest is obtained by completing the first visit to Olympus Colosseum. It has a Strength of 4, a Magic of 0, and the ability Air Combo Boost, which increases the damage of the finisher relative to how many hits you had in the combo, if the combo and finisher are done in the air. This is actually one of the best Keyblades early on, and even one of the best in the game. Not many Keyblades match the Strength of 4 until quite a bit later. The Air Combo Boost ability is great for general usage, allowing any air combo you do to have a more powerful finisher. This Keyblade, if used later in the game, is pair best paired with the abilities Horizontal Slash and Air Combo Plus to get the most damage out of the finisher. Monochrome is obtained after completing Timeless River. It has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 2, and the ability Item Boost, which increases the effect of restoration items used on the field. Monochrome is a very good all-around Keyblade when you obtain it. It is the only Keyblade at this point to have a Strength of 3 in addition to a Magic of 2. The item boost ability will help keep you alive by enhancing the effect of potions and ethers. It is also a very good keyblade to use to level up or use wisdom form with, as its magic is decent and item boost will enhance the effect of ethers, allowing you to spam magic more efficiently with the keyblade equipped during item usage. Follow the Wind is obtained after completing the first visit to Port Royal. It has a strength of 3 with a magic of 1, and the ability Draw, which draws in nearby orbs. 
At the point when you get it, Follow the Wind is honestly not a very useful Keyblade. Some may enjoy the draw ability, but overall, you would be better off with any other Keyblade you already have obtained at this point. Circle of Life is obtained after completing the first visit to the Pride Lands. It has a Strength of 4, a Magic of 1, and the ability MP Haste, which allows for increased MP restoration speed after MP is fully consumed. This is a great Keyblade when you obtain it. Those interested in dealing as much damage as possible would still be better off with the Hero's Crest. However, the Circle of Life is a great all-around Keyblade for general use, especially when considering using magic. Oathkeeper is obtained after completing Sora's first return to Twilight Town. It has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 3, and the ability Form Boost, which increases the duration of a Drive Form. This Keyblade doesn't have the best stats, however, its ability is great for using Drive Forms. I would recommend keeping this Keyblade on the Drive Form of your choice from the time you get it, and always keep it on Drive Form throughout the whole game. It's always worth having a longer Drive Form over more damage from another Keyblade, as you will be doing insane damage in a Drive Form anyway. Oathkeeper lets you get the most out of every dry form use. Photon Debugger is obtained after completing the first visit to Space Paranoids. It has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 2, and the ability Thunder Boost, which increases damage done by Thunder-based attacks. Photon Debugger is a decent Keyblade. It is helpful if you tend to use Thunder Magic a lot, however it is not very well rounded because of the Thunder Boost ability, and it is very situational. That being said, this Keyblade is extremely useful when trying to beat certain Mushroom 13 challenges, particularly Mushroom number 5, which requires a certain amount of damage to be dealt to him. Gullwing is obtained from the Gullwings, Yuna, Riku, and Pain, after completing the second visit to Hollow Bastion. Return to the postern after leaving the world after the Battle of the Thousand Heartless, and the Gullwings will be there. They will give you a chest containing the Gullwing. It has a Strength of 2, a Magic of 3, and the ability Experience Boost, which greatly increases the amount of experience gained when defeating an enemy when your health is in the red or critical zone. The Gullwing is a pretty bad choice of Keyblade to use. The damage is horrible compared to other Keyblades you could be using, and chances are you won't even be in the critical health zone as much as you might think. And even then, experience should not be your first thought. This Keyblade should only be used if you are grinding for experience, and even then you would need to make sure you are fighting enemies who do not drop health orbs so that you can stay at a critical health level. For general use when playing through the story, you'd be better off staying away from this Keyblade. Rumbling Rose is obtained after completing the second visit to Beast Castle. It has a Strength of 5, a Magic of 0, and the ability Finishing Plus, which adds another finisher to your combo. This is easily one of the best Keyblades in the game. It doesn't have very good reach or magic, but makes up for it in its damage and ability. Later in the game, you will want to use a Keyblade for its ability over stats, since your stats will most likely already be very high anyway. If you're playing Critical Mode, you will have had Finishing Plus since you started the game. Add that to the Finishing Plus you get from leveling up, and you can have 4 finishers in one combo when using this Keyblade. That is insane! On any other difficulty, using this Keyblade will provide you with a maximum of 3 finishers in the combo, which is still pretty insane. For certain bosses, this Keyblade might, might not work well as they can retaliate after a certain number of hits or finishers, however this Keyblade will wreck in general use, and definitely use it as a general purpose Keyblade at the point when you get it in the story. Guardian Soul is obtained after completing the second visit to Olympus Coliseum. It has a Strength of 5, a Magic of 1, and the ability Reaction Boost, which increases the amount of damage dealt from Reaction Commands. This Keyblade is a direct answer to the Rumbling Rose. If you are following the world in story order, you should get this Keyblade right after you get the Rumbling Rose. This Keyblade shares Rumbling Rose's strength while adding a point of magic. It also has excellent reach. Reaction Boost makes this Keyblade great for general use and certain boss fights. When it comes between using this or Rumbling Rose, I say use whatever you prefer. They both complement each other and are great for general use. If you want to dish out damage with finishers, use the Rumbling Rose. If you want a great all-around Keyblade, use the Guardian Soul. Wishing Lamp is obtained after completing the second visit to Agrabah. It has a Strength of 4, a Magic of 3, and the ability Jackpot, which increases the drop rate of money, HP, and MP orbs. Wishing Lamp is in a weird position. You get it after already having Rumbling Rose and Guardian Souls, so this Keyblade is definitely overlooked. And honestly, I'm okay with that. Wishing Lamp is decent, but Jackpot is an ability that can't even compete with the previous two. 
However, this is a decent Keyblade regardless as it, has an, as it has a nice balance between its strength and magic stats, making this great for general use. Decisive Pumpkin is obtained after completing the second visit to Halloween Town. It has a strength of 6, a magic of 1, and the ability Combo Boosts, which boosts the damage of the combo and its finishers relative to how many times you hit the enemy in that combo. This Keyblade is nothing short of incredible. While not very good for general use later in the game, it is still one of the most viable and powerful Keyblades no matter what level you are. In addition to any combo boosts you might already have from leveling, this can deal massive damage. It arguably can even have the potential to deal more physical damage than Fenrir when taking into account the insane damage your finishers will deal. At level 99 when fighting dead organization members, this Keyblade will be an incredible monster. Anyone at this point will have the ability to take out entire health bars with finishers no matter what Keyblade you have, but this Keyblade takes it to another level. This is one of, if not the best Keyblade to fight endgame bosses with, even over Ultima Weapon and Fenrir. Sweet Memories is obtained after completing every page of the 100 Acre Wood. It has a strength of 0, a magic of 4, and the ability Lucky Lucky, which increases the drop rate of items. While having mediocre stats, this Keyblade is still great because of its ability. This Keyblade is great to use when hunting for synthesis materials. Combine it with Lucky, the Lucky Lucky you get from leveling up, and Donald and then Goofy's abilities and equipment with Lucky Lucky, and you'll have every synthesis material in no time. If you're trying to get the Ultima Weapon, equip this Keyblade whenever you're doing non-story tasks, or whenever you're looking for specific materials, and it will be extremely helpful and it will help you get to the Ultima Weapon much faster than if you didn't have it. Mysterious Abyss is attained by completing every episode of Atlantica. It has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 3, and the ability Blizzard Boost, which increases the damage dealt by Blizzard-based attacks. Mysterious Abyss has almost no purpose to exist, other than to give Atlantica a Keyblade. Its stats are not worthy of how late you get it in the game. If you aren't going for the full game completion, aren't going for the ultimate weapon, and don't want to do certain Mushroom 13 challenges where Blizzard Boost might be helpful, and you're already played through Atlantica in the past, save through the trouble and just don't take the time to run through Atlantica just if you want to get the Keyblade. If you do decide to play through Atlantica, this Keyblade just isn't worth being used anyway. Sleeping Lion is obtained upon reaching the third visit to Hollow Bastion before entering Space Paranoids for the second time. It has a Strength of 5, a Magic of 3, and the ability Combo Plus, which increases the number of hits on the ground combos by 1. Sleeping Lion is an excellent Keyblade. It has great reach, powerful and balanced stats, and a free Combo Plus, allowing you to unequip one of your current Combo Pluses to free up AP, or add another one if you really like long combos. However, that can also be this Keyblade's weak point. Stay away from this Keyblade if you want to get your finishers faster. However, if you're like me and only use one combo plus most of the time, then this Keyblade is great for fighting normal enemies. Bond of Flame is obtained before entering the world that never was. It has a Strength of 4, a Magic of 4, and the ability Fire Boost, which increases the damage of fire-based attacks. This Keyblade is not the greatest for general use, having a short reach and low damage. However, when fighting certain bosses, and when trying to complete certain Mushroom 13 challenges, this Keyblade really can come in handy. To Become One is obtained after defeating Roxas in the world that never was. It has a Strength of 5, a Magic of 4, and the ability Light and Dark, which makes the activation of any Drive form put you in either Final or Anti form. This Keyblade is great for getting Final Form fast, as the form becomes available after the fight with Roxas at the same time that you get this Keyblade. It is also very decent and well-balanced Keyblade in general. However, it is very unreliable when using Drive Forms, as you will get Anti-Form very often. I would recommend staying away from this Keyblade for that reason after unlocking Final Form. Oblivion is obtained after defeating Zigbar in the world that never was. It has a Strength of 6, a Magic of 2, and the ability Drive Boost, which allows the Drive Gauge to recharge faster while MP is charging. For general use, Oblivion is a decent weapon, and Decisive Pumpkin is still better suited for dishing out damage at this point in the game. However, where this weapon shines is its ability. If you're using Drive Forms, this is THE weapon to have equipped on your primary Keyblade slot. 
and when paired with Oathkeeper, this is extremely powerful. Oblivion and Oathkeeper were most likely given complementary abilities due to how they were always being see seen being dual wielded, and thus they complement each other when being dual wielded with drive forms. Fatal Crest is obtained after completing the Goddess of Fate Cup at Olympus Coliseum. It has a Strength of 3, a Magic of 5, and the ability Berserk Charge, which increases attack power and disables finishers during MP Charge, allowing for infinitely long combos when MP is recharging. This Keyblade is an interesting one. Generally, this would be a fairly weak Keyblade, thanks to its ability and low strength. However, when Mushroom 13 challenges were introduced in Final Mix, this became an extremely useful Keyblade. Many Mushroom 13 challenges benefit from the use of this Keyblade through, use, through abusing Berserk Charge, and it's high magic that helps when paired with the magic boost keyloids during drive forms. You can just equip the berserk charge ability you get from leveling up, sure, but using this keyblade instead will allow you to not have to unequip the ability every time you're done using it. Also, this keyblade has an excellent reach that helps with many of the challenges where you need to continue hitting the Mushroom 13 Heartless, making it a perfect match for its ability. If you're running through the Mushroom 13 challenges, always have this keyblade on standby because it's really going to come in handy. Fenrir is obtained after defeating Sephiroth at the Dark Depths in Hollow Bastion, or Radiant Garden at this point, available after completing the third visit to the world. It has a Strength of 7, a Magic of 1, and the ability Negative Combo, which decreases the number of hits you can have in your combos by 1. Fenrir is a powerful beast. If used correctly, it can deal massive damage in an extremely short amount of time. Negative Combo benefits this Keyblade greatly and is and answer to the Decisive Pumpkin's combo boost ability, which benefits from stronger finishers the more hits you have in your combo. This Keyblade is the opposite, forcing your finishers to come sooner, and having a higher base damage to make the finishers more powerful on their own without combo boost. However, it is a very situational Keyblade. It is best used to clear out harder enemies quickly, or against certain bosses. Ultimo Weapon is obtained through Synthesis, requiring you to have the recipe for the weapon and also having enough materials to craft it. It technically becomes available after defeating Xemnas for the first time in the world that never was, when more content becomes available in the game to allow you to get the last few materials you require to make the weapon. It has a Strength of 6, a Magic of 4, and the ability MP Hastega, which greatly reduces MP recharge time. The Ultimo Weapon is an excellent weapon, and is arguably the best Keyblade to use in any situation at all. MP Hostega is an excellent ability and its stats are extremely powerful in balance between strength and magic. It also has an excellent reach. The Ultimo Weapon is getting a special treatment in my guide as I am going to briefly describe exactly what you need to do to obtain this weapon. Firstly, you need to obtain the recipe from the same room that held Donald and Goofy in a stasis in the beginning of the game. Then, you must obtain the 7 Oracalcum Pluses that are in the game. Use an energy crystal when actually performing the final synthesis to lower the requirement from 13 Orichalcum Pluses down to 7. These Orichalcum Pluses are obtained through completing the 100 Acre Wood, completing Atlantica, beating the Goddess of Fate Cup in Olympus Coliseum, in a chest in the Brink of Despair in the World That Never Was, in a chest in the Central Computer Mesa at Space Paranoids, in a chest in the Sunset Terrace at Twilight Town, and from the Moogle Shop after obtaining every synthesis item in the game, which there are 60 items total. 10 of these items are a Final Mix exclusive, and can be obtained through opening certain chests in the Caverns of Remembrance, beating certain bosses, and getting high enough scores against the Mushroom 13. The Mushroom 13 versions of these items can be obtained from any Mushroom 13, it doesn't have to be one from certain mushrooms. There should be a list on screen now showing every synthesis item and the enemy you will need to defeat to obtain it. I will also put this list in the description. You will also need to complete the requirements of items you need to actually make the weapon, which is 13 Orichalcum Pluses, which I've already covered, how you need to use a Serenity Crystal to lower the requirement, or no, not Serenity, Energy Crystal to lower the requirement of this, 1 Orichalcum, 1 Mithril Crystal, 1 Defense Crystal, 1 Twilight Crystal, and 3 Serenity Crystals, all of which you should already have if you found all 60 items anyway. With all these requirements out of the way, the ultimate weapon is free to synthesize. It is definitely worth it, as the Ultima Weapon is an extremely cool Keyblade and one that is very powerful for general use. The final Keyblade in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix is one that is exclusive to the Final Mix version of the game. This is the Winner's Proof, and it is obtained by earning at least an A rank score on every Mushroom 13 challenge. 
It has a strength of 5, a magic of 7, and the ability no experience, which disables earning experience when defeating enemies. Due to how long every Mushroom 13 takes to defeat, I will not be showing you all how to beat them myself. Instead, I will put a link in the description to a great video series that I personally used to help me when defeating Mushroom 13 for the first time I did them. The videos also show how to get S rank, so you only need A rank on the Mushroom anyway, so it's a great video series. Once you beat every Mushroom 13, go to the Great Maw and Radiant Garden to obtain the Keyblade. It's not the most amazing Keyblade, but it has a decent power, the best magic stat in the game, excellent reach, and it's just a cool Keyblade to have to commemorate your victory against the Mushrooms. I would recommend going for this Keyblade anyway, since doing so will also grant you a crown color, the other two being obtained through beating Lingering Will and beating every Data Organization member. As for the Keyblade's ability, no experience is kinda pointless at the point when you get the Keyblade. By the time you get the Keyblade, you will either be a high enough level to where no experience would have no benefit at all to you, or at a point when, they are st when you are still level 1 and are going to keep your own no experience ability on anyway. I feel like they just gave this Keyblade this ability so the Keyblade can have an ability of some sort on it. And that's it. Thank you for watching my guide to every Keyblade in Kingdom Hearts 2 Final Mix. Uh, if you enjoyed this video and it helped you at all, it would mean so much if you liked it, figured it, or shared it, or anything. Just because I worked, took so much time, I worked so hard on this video, I put a lot of effort into it, so it really would mean a lot. I'm also going to include the script for this video in the description in case anyone needs quick reference for this info. Uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Peace.